This video is sponsored by Nanlite. In this video, I'm gonna cover how I took these creative portraits in the studio using the Nanlite Forza 300B and the projection attachment. Let's go ahead and cover todo el pedo. Here I'm in the studio and I'm using the Forza 300B Mark II as my key light. And I wanted something a little bit creative and in order to do that, I love using a projector attachment. And with a modifier like this, it gives you endless possibilities, especially when you use gobos. But in this case, my idea and theme was to keep it simple and to use a circle as my overall basis for these shoots. And the important thing is the light position. So when you're using something like a circle gobo and you're using it as your key light in front of your subject, you wanna raise up the light and have it tilted down just so that you get some nice sculpting on the face. Now positioning your light, it's also important when you're working with a projector attachment because the closer you bring it into the subject, what that's gonna do is that that's gonna make your circle smaller and the further back that you move it, the bigger the circle you're going to get. Once I had my key light in position and I had the circle size the way I wanted, then I decided to add some fill light because I had all of those deep shadows and I felt like this was the perfect opportunity to add color into those shadows. So I added a second LED light, which was the Nanlite FC500B with the reflector that comes in the box. Now I set this to 30% and the key thing here is that Usually when I work in the studio, I've used uh, something called Mylar, which is that reflective kind of aluminum paper. But I wanted to try something different for these shoots. So what I used is a holographic paper, sometimes called cellophane wrap paper. And what I did is I used this second light to throw light into that reflective colored paper to bounce back some abstract color into those shadows. And what I loved about this paper is that it gave me different shapes and colors because it's just random depending on the movement of the paper. And I had my assistant and I also used the fan to kind of give me different looks for this first shot. Now, once I had my key light set to 100% and my fill light set to about 33%, my first idea was to have the subject standing with a circle in the background. Now, whenever I'm using constant lights, and the reason why I love using constant lights in the studio is what you see is what you get. And so for my camera settings, it was pretty simple. I set it, my aperture to F4, my ISO to 200, and I just use the shutter speed to get exactly the brightness that I want on my subject. And this is what I got. In this next set, I decided to add some props into the set. And what I added was a posing block and a director's chair. Whenever I find myself with some great lighting as my key light and my fill light, I don't wanna interrupt that. I wanna give myself a new opportunity to get a fresh look. So adding these props is great, not only for different looks, of course, but it gives the subject something to do. They can lean, they can sit, and they can get different looks while keeping your lighting looking great. Now, one thing I do wanna mention is I was using tethering using Capture One with the Tether Tools cable. And I find this very essential when I'm shooting in the studio because I love getting feedback from my team. So if I'm working with a stylist, of course I can get feedback from the model, any assistants that are helping me. And I find that very crucial whenever I'm shooting. Another thing that I love to do when I'm shooting in the studio is to use my Canon R5 with the 24 to 105 f4. And I love that lens and it practically never comes off my camera in the studio because I can get multiple different looks by zooming out and zooming in if I want a close up or a wide shot. And I absolutely love that lens. Now on this particular shot in this next series, 
I want it now the subject to lie down so that I can get different poses. Now one tip that I can give you guys when you're working in the studio is buy a mirror so that your model and subject can see themselves as they're posing. And the last couple of shoots that I've used it, it's been a complete game changer and I cannot believe that I didn't have one before. And if you don't have one guys, I promise you, you'll love it. And in order to get this shot with the subject crouched down and lying down, I had to go back to my key light, which was that Forza 300B with the projection attachment. And I had to adjust the tilt and angle it down because remember my vision here was to get a different look with them lying down and crouched down. Let me know what you think of this next series. On this next set, this one was by far my favorite and the one I was looking forward to the most. And what I had to do on this one was I had to change my key light position and position it high up in the air and tilt it coming down so that we get the circle now coming from above down into the ground. And this was probably the biggest challenge for me during this set because the lighting wasn't typically the light position that I'm used to. I'm used to having the light you know, camera right, camera left, or in butterfly light position, but coming up, it did provide some challenges, but this is what I liked about it, is that I'm trying to get out of my comfort zone. I'm trying to, you know, experiment with different things, and you'll see me here. I was trying out different angles. I, if I wasn't mistaken, I got on a, uh, a ladder. I tried shooting down, tried shooting 45 degrees to the subject, and Basically, I tried to move around as much as possible instead of just staying stuck in the same area over and over again. And on these specific shots, I did tell my models, I did want some bold posing here just because it was going to be different what I'm, from what I'm typically used to. But I was very happy with the results on these shots. Now, one thing I do want to remind you guys is that my power output was staying the same throughout this entire series. My key light was still at 100% power and my fill light was still at 33% power. Overall, I'm loving constant lights in the studio because what you see is what you get and expect to see more constant lights in my work in the future. And my favorites are definitely the Nan lights because they provide so many different options. And I feel like the Forza 300B Mark II provides the perfect amount of power output to get creative in the studio. Let me know in the comments section, what was your favorite set from this shoot? Thank you guys for watching. You guys have a beautiful day and I will see you on the next one.